This year, for the first time since the dawn of our democracy, this State of the Nation Address is being delivered with us not being in the Chamber of the National Assembly. We are now ready to enter a new phase in our management of the pandemic. It is our intention, and also my clear intention, to end the national state of disaster as soon as we have finalized We will do so as soon as we have finalized other measures under the National Health Act, as well as other legislation to manage and contain the pandemic. This we have to do. We will review the policy and regulatory framework for a whole number of other processes, but more importantly, which will come as uh, sweet news for our people in the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal for industrial hemp and cannabis to realize huge potential for investment and job creation. Now, this natural product, which our people have been farming with and harvesting for a number of purposes, is now going to be industrialized. And and no longer just being resorted to the, the, the smoke process. We are reviewing the Business Act alongside a broader review of legislation that affects small and medium enterprises to reduce the regulatory burden on informal businesses. We have found that there are too many regulations in our economy and our country that are unduly complicated, costly, and difficult to comply with. Now, this prevents companies from growing and creating jobs. In the clothing industry, a number of retailers have announced ambitious plans with regard to, localiz to localization sourcing. One of these retailers is Foshini, partly owned by workers, kindly made the suit that I'm wearing today <laughs> at this new formal wear factory in Prestige here in the Western Cape in Epping. Five years, five years ago, more than 80% of all Foshini Group merchandise came from East Asia. Today, nearly half of their merchandise is locally made, which shows a great deal of process, pro progress. Since the beginning of the year, I've been provided with the first two parts of the report of the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture headed by Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. While the definitive conclusion has yet to be delivered at the end of this month, the first two parts of the report make it plain that there was indeed state capture. Now, by no later than June, I will present the plan of action in response to the Commission's recommendations. And I'll present it to you sitting right here. There are also discussions underway with the judiciary for the creation of special court roles for state capture and corruption cases. Earlier this week, we released a report on the expert panel that I appointed into the civil unrest in July last year. The report paints a deeply disturbing picture of the capabilities of our security services and the structures that exist to coordinate their work. The report concludes that government's initial handling of the July 2021 events was inept, police operational planning was poor, there was poor coordination, 
between the state security and intelligence services and police are not always embedded in the communities that they serve. The panel found that cabinet must take overall responsibility for the events of July 2021. Now, this is, this is a responsibility that we acknowledge and we also accept. We will begin immediately by filling critical vacancies and addressing positions affected by suspensions in the State Security Agency and in crime intelligence. We will soon be announcing leadership changes in a number of security agencies to strengthen our security structures. The staffing of the Public Order Policing Unit of the South African Police Service will be brought to an appropriate level with appropriate training in place as well.